Timeboxing Trilogy Part 4, Decremental Timeboxing, written by Katsumoto, posted in July of 2010. Here we go again with another entry in the Timeboxing series. I really should stop calling it a trilogy, since there are quite clearly more than three parts, but... Whatever. I mean, it was originally intended to span only three parts, but it kept... Okay, no, we're not talking about this anymore. What is Decremental Timeboxing? Okay, so Decremental Timeboxing, aka Downward Spiral Timeboxing. What the heck is it? Well, Decremental Timeboxing is another nested timeboxing variant that occurred to me in the course of my daily adventures. All it is, is running timeboxes sequentially, back to back, while making each new timebox shorter than the previous one. Like dual timeboxing, Decremental Timeboxing is a nested timeboxing method. Unlike dual timeboxing, Decremental Timeboxing requires only one timer. Kel, why? The task is big, it needs time. But you don't want to feel like a lot of time is being spent, because this feeling of burden and enormity leads to procrastination. You want to shorten the time for the task to take advantage of temporal motivation or Parkinson's law. But you can't make it that much shorter. I don't have the evidence, but I imagine that our attention or mental energy follows a curve. Over a single session, our ability to pay attention, to focus mental energy on a task, generally decreases. But it doesn't disappear. We don't suddenly run out of energy. Rather, it fades away. Decremental timeboxing takes advantage of the fact that we still have some mental energy to bring to bear. But decremental timeboxing also takes into account the fact that A, we're weakening, and B, creating a feeling of this is going to end soon makes us work better. As always with timeboxing, all we are doing is cleverly choking the D term of the temporal motivation theory equation. Decremental timeboxing turns work into play. Just a little bit. We're almost done. Just this little bit. Just a couple more minutes. Unlike dual timeboxing, decremental timeboxing accomplishes a nesting effect using only one timer. After all, we can't always be flav of flav in it with multiple chronometers. What kinds of decrement patterns, i.e. timebox sizes, do you use? Decremental patterns, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Units, minutes. Each timebox is one minute shorter than its predecessor. 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. Units, minutes. Each timebox is half the length of its predecessor. 90, 60, 30. Units, seconds. Incidentally, this was at one point my favorite decrement pattern for washing dishes. Decremental timeboxing with decremental reset. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1, 2, 1. Units, minutes. Each timebox is one minute shorter than its predecessor. And lastly, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. 5, 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 2, 1. And then 1. Units, minutes. Each time box is half the length of its predecessor. In closing, somewhere along the line, we all seem to learn the false lesson that only big matters, that our steps do not count, that the process is a waste of time, that if we're not working our way to a heart attack, then we're not really working. Everything is too small. Everything is too late for the fictional deadlines we make up. Everything is too early because we don't have the imaginary perfect tool set we're supposed to have. And all the while, we're wondering why nothing's happening. It's never too late. It's never too early. It's never too small. Do something, no matter how small. Do anything, the easier the better. Do something small, useful, now. I think that's almost it for this particular more than three part time box trilogy, except this, your questions. If you have any, I'll answer them in the next and probably though maybe not final post.